Time now for a special Valentine's Day version of the Insiders panel. Three senior strategists who have agreed to leave partisan politics behind to help us understand what happens behind closed doors. Kathleen Monk has worked with the NDP, Jamie Watt with the Conservatives, and David Hurley with the Liberals. So don't worry, this is a serious news show. We're not going to ask you to gossip about any politicians' marriages. Uh, we really just want to talk about how important spouses can be and how you as strategists need to include them in your planning. Um, and just how tough it can be. Just ask, I suppose, Michelle and Barack Obama. They, uh, after months of hard campaigning, uh, Obama promised her that he would take her for dinner and a show in New York after the campaign, but it didn't quite work out as planned. Watch this. It was early this morning by the time President Michelle Obama's big Saturday date night came to an end. Mr. Obama making good on a campaign promise to take his wife to New York for a Broadway show. The biggest show on Broadway Saturday, Date Night, starring President Barack Obama and wife Michelle. See the way? More than 600 police officers plus Secret Service agents coordinated security for the Obama's night out. 600 police, so a real backlash against that date among the American public. You can't even have a date now. What do they just call in chicken at the White House? How, how tough is it to have a personal life, a romantic life, a family life on the Hill? Well, especially for those people that don't have choppers to take them to New York, it's uh, <laughs> quite tough indeed. Um, in fact, I, you know, politics is very hard in relationships. I've seen in many relationships, uh, many people meet and become wonderful couples in politics. Unfortunately, those tend to be second marriages uh, for, those, uh, <laughs> for those people. Politics has the highest divorce rate you know, really? of all the professions. Uh, and I saw a study that said that most politicians spend seven hours a day at home, five of them sleeping. So you do that for 10, 15 years and see what happens to your relationship. You combine that with the scrutiny that's on people in public life and, and their personal lives, and you've got a recipe for... Uh, you know, or you, only the strongest relationships survive politics. Kathy? It's incredibly grueling. I have to agree with David. I mean, I think we've actually, I've actually experienced having to have staff meetings in order to schedule personal time for leaders. You know, you literally get a bunch of staff together to figure out where are we going to block in this time where he can spend time with family or spend time with his wife. And it's even complica more complicated, I guess, when a partner happens to be political as well. So I think there, there are a lot of issues you're contending with. Jamie? You know, I think in many ways, Ottawa is a lot like Fort McMurray. You know, those are both really? places where Canadians leave their home and leave their families to go and, uh, and to work. In Fort McMurray's place, they go and make more money than they've ever made before. And in Ottawa, they have more adulation and they're, they're put on a pedestal like they've never been put on before. And it's not healthy for families. You know, they don't have roots. They, they're not coming home to their families every night. So every day they work late. They go to some receptions, they end up at, at dinner, and they repeat it the next day. So it's not a family-friendly place or a family-friendly business at all. We often hear when uh, politicians step down that they're quitting to spend more time with their family. We all go, yeah, right, you know, there's something else. But, but it's probably true in some cases, right? I mean, how important is it to have the spouse on side and supportive? Well, I think it's, it's essential. In fact, when I talk to candidates who are thinking about running, it's one of the three questions I ask them. Is your family supporting you in this? That doesn't mean that they have to campaign or put up lawn signs or, or bake cookies for people who are working in the campaign office. But if they're not supporting you in what you're doing and they're not there for you, you actually can't make it work. Well, Hillary Clinton famously said, I ain't baking cookies, That's and right. uh, she upset a number of, uh, of his supporters, right? Uh, how, tough, how tough is it? Well, she, uh, that, she's an interesting example, though, because I think that she actually played an integral role in saving her husband's career many times mm -hmm. by being supportive. And in, you know, whether it was over Jennifer Flowers or whether it was over Monica Lewinsky, she had to step forward and publicly forgive her husband so that voters could forgive him and let him allow to continue in politics. She was as supportive a spouse as you could imagine. Well, we'll get into some of the specific strategies here in Canada in just a moment. But uh, first, just to remind people of some, I guess, some, some famous political marriages. Check this out. I want to speak to you a bit about my husband because I feel I have some inside information. Camila has meant so very much to me and to the campaign. She is the, the rock of Gibraltar. She tell it to me as it is. And it's better for me to listen. Uh, is my wife uh, happy today? A lot happier than she's been for a couple of years, so thank you all. And of course, to Lorraine, I don't know how you do it by my side, holding me up day in and day out for all of these years. I can never adequately express my love. 
very emotional. We don't usually see that from this Prime Minister, but it seemed appreciated. Well, by her, yeah. Well, and, and appreciated by him. I mean, uh, Laureen Harper is a formidable uh, politician, a uh, campaigner in her own right, and I, I don't think anybody would would uh, say that she doesn't add an awful lot to the Prime Minister's presence uh, on the campaign trail. She makes a huge difference to him. She her own spot on his website, you know, for her fans uh, that think she's a pretty important part of the Stephen Harper team. I think there are a couple of ways, though, that you can use family relationships um, in politics, how you would strategize behind that. And one is a very public way, like uh, using them on the campaign trail, as Lorraine Harper joined uh, Prime Minister Harper on the last campaign, or using them privately. Um, and how you use a family member privately might be a way where you've actually used the uh, family member as counsel or as a supportive way. For instance, Olivia Chow uh, was always the last person that kind of whispered into Jack Layton's ear before any election debate. Why? Because as his person who's closest to him, she was best positioned to really ground him before such an important event. We saw Maggie Trudeau in there, uh, David. Such She was so young and she started off really as a huge asset for him, right? Well, in the 1974 election, it was a big comeback win for Mr. Trudeau, who had almost been beaten by the Conservatives two years previously. And she, deserve, she receives a lot of credit for that comeback win in 1974 because she went out on the campaign trail and she took a guy that had a reputation as being a pretty aloof technocrat and humanized him and softened him up. And you could you could probably speculate that Lorene Harper's work with the Humane Society, for example, is having the same effect and to the same purpose uh, with Mr. Harper. I like to call it the, you know, the case of the kiss, right? There's kind of two kinds of kissing in politics. You know, there's the baby kissing that's much rumored, although I haven't seen much of it in my life. Um, and then there's the victory smooch. I see, we see a lot of that. And how... Well, is that planned ahead of time? Well, yeah, I mean, it is. I mean, to, often you see that smooch either just before a speech or after a speech. And I think a famous case of that, um, where that helped a candidate, was the Al Gore situation, where in 2000, at the Democratic National Convention, he laid that huge huge kiss on Tipper Gore and it lasted three seconds. Yeah, some people were boiled and some people <laughs> ran towards it. And I think it actually helped him in the polls. In fact, it did. It was, it was attributed to helping him in the polls, not only um, his rates going up, but also uh, with women voters. But it has to be rooted in authenticity. And I, and I think a, in, in terms of authenticity, it's a very simple fact. All of us do better in our jobs when things are good at home. All of us do better in our jobs when we feel happy and secure in our relationship. That's just magnified in politics when you've got the big clig lights and the spotlights of the media on you, on you as well. Mm. Well, and ultimately, Margaret Trudeau ended up hurting Trudeau's campaign. And then, and then you have to... So, so what is the strategizing that goes on when you, you're with a complicated spouse? Or, or, or should you just get out of it? I mean, do you have to have a supportive spouse to, to run for office? Um, well, you don't need to, but if you have an unsupportive spouse, um, then as the inverse of what Jamie says happens. And then you've got issues at home, you've got issues in your relationship, which will inevitably manifest themselves publicly in some fashion, either in the politician's performance or in uh, the time that they can spend at the job. And it, uh, so an unsupportive spouse is a, is a real negative. I think what you're pointing to is really the risks that's involved in using family members in some way, in a public way, in politics. And the risk that lies there is once you invite the media in and you use your family, they could delve further. Right. We don't and see as much of it here, though, as we see in the States. We've seen Anne Romney with Mitt right. Romney. She's, she's brought out every time. We, that doesn't seem to be the Canadian tradition. Well, no, the Canadian tradition has much more distance between families and what is actually, you know, put it put up front in the spotlight. But that's going to change. I mean, if you've got politicians who want to put their little kids on show and take advantage of that, then there's going to be a day when uh, the chickens may come home to roost, and that well, and may Harper not be was, something he was that so you want to do. He was so careful about how he presented his kids, right? His kids. But, you know, at the end of the day, we talk a lot in politics about strategy and tactics, whatever. We always forget it's a very, very human business, and the same kind of foibles that everybody else is dealing with in their own relationships, their own home and their own business are just been played out in Ottawa as well. Just yeah, I've never worked for a candidate that was even remotely interested, in my opinion, about their relationship or how to manage this, but... <laughs> yeah, their, their, their family and their <laughs> public. One, one last question. What's with the hand-holding? Why do they always have to... All of them, they all seem to... They're afraid of getting lost? <laughs> <laughs> well, they're going to new places. They haven't been down that airplane ramp before, you know, so they've got to be... But do we like that? Is there some poll that from. shows that everybody likes to see them? No, them? I think it's sort of a forced intimacy that they someone thinks they need to do. Yeah.
I think that's right. <laughs> Well, thank you all, and uh, it's, it's interesting to hear how strategists even get into the nitty-gritty of family life. Thank you very much for being with us today, and happy Valentine's to all of you. And to you too. And to you too.